Susan, how are you? I'm fine. How are you doing? So great to be talking to you today. Yeah, it's it's great to be connecting, um, and uh, I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. Thank you so much for taking the time to connect with us today. Uh, we're going to be addressing the question, is dating a numbers game? As you know, there are now a ton of options out there in dating because of all the dating apps and websites, and people are confused. Uh, they're confused about the approach they should take to increase their odds of finding that perfect match. And we felt that you would be the perfect person to talk to about this, given your expertise in the field. Oh, you're adorable. Thank you so much. So um, selection is good. We want to have enough of a pool of selection, you know, prospective mates, that we have choice and opportunity. The mm -hmm. downside to that, and the reason you so aptly said that so many people are confused, is that when we have too much choice, we become paralyzed, or we start thinking that, well, I've got something now, but there's gotta be better, because it's, it's this, we call it the paradox of choice. When you have that many choices, sometimes you don't make any choice. So what would happen is, You'd like to be in an online ecosystem that allows you to have enough variety so that you can find that person that best suits your disposition, your life goals, your lifestyle. But the pool of people is, is primarily something that that's your starting point for sifting. So when you know what you want, in a relationship and when you know who you are, you take from that wide selection and fairly quickly start to narrow the gate so that you are only focusing on the people who want what you want and they want it with you. That's how we eliminate confusion. We get very clear on what we want and what we need to create and from this large mass of prospective partners, we begin to filter through screening for uh, commonality, uh, shared goals and values, personality, do we feel safe, do we feel comfortable, are we okay with them? All those little things that tell us that we have a potential mate here. Okay, so what you're saying is be strategic about it. Yes, in the beginning it's nice to, you know, you think of old time periods where there were five single gals in an outpost community in the mm -hmm. 1800s. You didn't have a lot of selection. You had no confusion. It yes. is what it is, you take it's one of the three, Easy peasy, you don't have much choice. So choice is easy when you have a limited supply. Mm -hmm. However, a good dating site or um, a, a bevy of people from which to choose, we should start to narrow our focus according to what our own filtration system is for the specificity of our desires. Right, and what if people get burned out from dating so much because you know, we're not robots, right? Yeah, and yeah, yeah. every day we get, it, it accumulates. Like if we get frustrated, if we're ghosted, how do people manage that, uh, manage those emotions that might come up while a, they are testing the waters? Yeah, yeah, that's a great question because listen, online dating especially, you know, it's a full-time job. It's work. You've got to be online. You've got to be chatting. Are they going to fall by the wayside? Did they mean that? Are they actually single? They paid attention to you. You thought you had something. Now they go away. You don't know where you stand. Dating burnout is very, very common. We are going through volumes of people um, in every year. I've got girlfriends that have been actively dating millennials who say, Susan, honestly, I've gone out with a hundred different guys. Now, I want to be very clear, they didn't sleep with them, they went out with them, but they were looking for just one. So if you are completely overwhelmed, if every time you open up the computer or your phone, you're looking, oh gosh, I should do it, I don't want to do it, take a dating detox. Take time out, allow yourself the luxury to just forget about everything. If you want to make a purposeful time out, I suggest that you write down the top qualities that you want in a relationship Forget about it, say, you know what, I'll get back to it later. And it's oftentimes in those moments when you're just being yourself and you're relaxed, 
and you're like giving yourself the freedom to not date, not be stressed, that you start to find, oh my goodness, that person's really cool. Yeah, it's an easy conversation because you're no longer hunting. So sometimes during a dating detox is the actual time that you find a perfect partner because you're relaxed. Yeah, because if you get into that worry mode and you're stressed out, then that's not good energy, right? Yeah, exactly. And there's a frustration that goes with dating. Remember, it's the one thing that we keep applying our effort, but we don't know if we're going to get an outcome. And if we get an outcome, we don't know that it's going to last. So in most other things, you know, you work at something, you achieve, you succeed, you get to a certain level. In dating, it feels far more nebulous. It feels like, oh, am I ever making progress? So the progress that I look for is the individual's awareness and clarity. That is, you know, dating is really about advancing one's own skill set for being a great partner. It is um, putting you through the physical rigors of really getting clear on what you want because you probably have seen dozens of cases, I don't want this, I don't want this, oh, for sure I don't want that. Mm -hmm. And I, for all of us that say, oh, we hate online dating, we all know at least two or three people that are happily married because of it and felt the same way and then one day went, oh my gosh, this is it. So, you know, it works. We just have to take a time out when we need to, filter, filter, filter for what we think is the best romantic prospect for our disposition and our goals. Right, I love that, dating detox. <laughs> All right, so do you have any specific tips that we can, that people can do to maximize their chances of finding that perfect match? Well, um, one, be open to it. You know, uh, I did an article years ago and it, it went viral because we did a clickbait title. It was like, um, you know, one, 98 men, nine months, here's what I learned. I went on 98 dates because I was told by numerous people, you need to date a variety of guys. You met somebody in real life, been in a 10 year relationship, gotten free, met somebody at the gym, 10 year relationship, you don't know, you haven't dated doctors, lawyers, whatever. So, I did that, but I honestly, I had dinner dates and coffee and I didn't meet anybody because to be truthful, I wasn't over my ex. And so I wasn't in the right headspace. It was kind of a waste of time for me. But if you can be open to the process and try to stay optimistic, it is a lot of sifting, but you're looking for one, just one, not hundreds, one. And then if we know on top of that, additionally, we're very, very clear on what we want, how we want to feel when we're in the presence of another person. We've probably had enough experience that we know things we don't want. We get tuned into what we do want and then simply proceed. And, and, I, and I try not to borrow trouble early on. I think people oftentimes back away from finding somebody because one single red flag, they're like, no, 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 terrible. He didn't call me back. And it was four hours. He put me on read. He didn't call me back. You know, everybody's nervous in the beginning. And so we have to give a little leeway for some glitches as people move through the dating process because everybody's scared. But dating will teach you what you don't want, which shows you what you do want, which guides you to the right partner. So it can all be usable information. Interesting. And do you think... Do you think it's better to go by how you feel or having that sort of checklist process? Because I know, you know, or can we do both? Ideally, you do both. Most of us make a checklist. And when we find somebody enticing, we're just like, whatever, whatever, you know. But um, if you've been through a few relationships only to realize that you made a choice based on your eyes were choosing or like what's so common is that people choose somebody visually agreeable and then try and cram the qualities they're looking for inside this person. Then they're frustrated when they don't show up that way. Right. It's really better to take a more measured approach and start to look for a resonance and an ease. It, I think one of the greatest indicators of a potential good relationship is the ability to feel comfortable in their presence. Mm. Always, right? You're always going to be a little nervous inside, but you don't want to be like, oh, I hope I'm okay, and I don't know, I shouldn't say this, and self-editing, not a good sign, means you don't feel accepted. 
that's just a reflection of the other person's self-criticism because the most comfortable people will make you feel comfortable. So what happens is we will only be attracted to what we want to be attracted to. And that's natural for us. We've got to keep calling up, as you said, it's both. We need to keep calling up, hmm, delightful, adorable, delicious, but you know, are they looking for a serious relationship? Are they looking for somebody that you know has my lifestyle? Do they understand me? Can they get behind why I do what I do? That's important. Day-to-day -day life, how would we function together? So these are important questions to ask and they help you to clarify everything and get to that right match. Right, and that is a more mature way of dating, right? Yeah, it should be. I mean, ideally when you're young, you dive in because you don't have a history of I want, I don't want. You don't know, you're a blank slate. You just dive in and go, oh, well, don't want this next time, so then that's all you've got in your list, right? Then you go, yeah. oh, and don't want that, and I don't want that. But then you should, adding up, when you're looking at your history, also add up the good stuff. Mm -hmm. I always tell my clients to make a list. When they look back at everybody they've been with who's been an actual partner, mm -hmm. make a list of all the things that drew you to them that were wonderful that you want to keep. So that's like the base for your recipe. If you're making a soup, that's your stock, right? Then the things that you see that, oh, this, I, I cannot, I can't be with somebody critical. Mm -hmm. It's just painful. I can't, I can't be with somebody that's constantly trying to monitor how I look so that they can look good to their friends and that going out to the pool requires high heels and you know, dieting for four weeks and eating a cucumber, I'm gonna lose my mind. This is not the relationship I want, right? Uh, As yeah. My friend said you don't wanna live in a party dress every day of your life. Right. So start to use those things to compare and it's like, then I say, take not just the painful thing, not what yeah. you don't want, so I don't wanna be tense. Make the positive statement in reverse. I want to feel comfortable being myself. Yes, I want them to challenge me. I would like my partner to encourage me to be my best self. Mm -hmm. I don't want to feel like I'm living on pins and needles and walking on eggshells every day. Uh, mm -hmm. So this is how we cement the positive that we know works, the things we like, and start to take the things that didn't work, flip them to their positive opposite, and get a really clear image of where we're going. Yeah, I love it, Susan. So finding that person who makes us feel like we're home, right? Uh, that I, I love that phrase. I love that phrase. I love that. that uh, that's so brilliant. That is probably the wisest thing I've ever heard. Yes, it, because <laughs> when you're with the right person, it feels like home. It feels right. safe and warm and secure and wonderful. And, and I'll tell you a story about a lady I met in the laundry room of my apartment building. Mm -hmm. I've had a number of apartment buildings in the years I've lived in New York City. Mm -hmm. But I was all before, long before I did this work, I would always ask people, because I've been a great observer of human nature, and I was doing another career, but I just wanted to ask her, and she was happy, and she said, oh, I'm getting engaged. And so I said, so what was it about this one? How did you know? And she said, it was so easy. I don't know what I was doing with everybody else. I was trying to put the square peg into the round hole. I don't know. I was struggling and trying and working and working at it. She said, this was just so easy. Oh, don't get me wrong. It's not as though things don't have to be worked through, but it feels effortless. And I wonder why I did all the rest of that to myself and put myself through it. And so me now, as a relationship expert on this side of it, would say, well, not for nothing, but you were learning a lot about yourself. You learned a ton of what you didn't want, and when you saw what you wanted, you went, wow, I'm taking it. That's why I took it back. Right, yeah, so dating more people gives us more clarity, and more clarity gives us more, takes us towards progress, basically. Exactly. All right, perfect, Susan. We really appreciate you making time to share your knowledge with us and everyone else out there who's searching for, for that true love. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure to speak with you today. Well, me too. Thank you. You're adorable and you're so sweet and so you really know your, you know your field. I love the questions you've asked me because they're very, very helpful to all of your daters. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. You too, hon. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.